this topic will either make With, will, will either make you uh, definitely fall asleep or it will hopefully <laughs> wake you up. <coughs> so, six axis um, correction. This all, all deformity corrections actually have always been uh, six axis. It is just that we have put this new uh, label onto this because. Uh, we do six, all the six axes are tackled at the same time, so, so to speak. So, actually deformities exist in 3D space and they are corrected also in uh, three dimensional space. Only thing is for the planning, we usually use uh, two dimensional representations of the AP and the lateral X-ray. So, what is these, what are these uh, axes? If you look at, you know, geometry and, and physics and stuff, there is the z axis, there is the y axis and there is the uh, x, x axis. So, if you look at the um, plane of the screen, you can say the one which is going up is the y axis, the one below it is the z axis and a line which is coming straight out of the screen towards you is the um, z axis, right. So, three axes x, y and z is which is perpendicular to the plane. <laughs> so, if you look at a deformity like this which is an oblique plane deformity where on the AP you see a deformity as well as the lateral you see a deformity. Uh, this is in, in uh, 3D space and this can be defined in terms of how much is the deformity in, in uh, relation to the x, y and the z axis what is known as 3D coordinates. So, in this in a patient when you look at the AP x-ray you are seeing the frontal plane. So, if you take the x axis as you know if you are looking at me if you look at the x axis like this and the y axis like that and the z axis is coming uh, straight out at you which is represented by a dot. So, now the y axis is here and the z axis is here. If I turn around, right, now the y axis is facing you. So, when you do a lateral x ray or the x axis is uh, facing you, sorry. So, when you do a lateral x ray, it is the same y axis which is up, but now the x axis is facing you and the z axis is now uh, this way. The only thing that is not seen on x rays is rotation, right. So, in that case now, it is the y axis which was top to bottom when you are looking at rotation in, in a limb, it is along the uh, y axis. So, for all movements basically there are, if, if, if you sort of cut it down to the bottom line, the only two movements that are there in, in three dimensional space are translation and rotation there is only two movements, right. Angulation also is actually a uh, rotation, we will we'll see that. So, you have three translations in the axial um, plane and you have uh, three rotations, sorry, you have three translations and you have three rotations along these three axis or in the direction of the axis. Now, conventional Elizara, when you have a deformity like this, where there is a certain amount of shortening, uh, there is you can see a certain amount of angulation between the two and also there is a rotational deformity. Often this would require uh, with, with conventional uh, Elizarov, this would require one a sequential correction, where in step one you first correct the shortening that is you distract it. Then you change the hardware and correct the angulation in the AP plane by means of hinges. Then in step 3 again you change the hinges and correct the angulation in the lateral plane. These 2 and 3 can be combined if it is an oblique plane, but sometimes this will be required. And finally in step 4 <laughs> you have to correct the rotation. Now when we do an Elisa, uh, when we do a regular Elizarov, when you just lengthen one bone is going 
to the, uh, the one end of the bone is going to its desired projection in one movement or in one direction. In this what happens, first there is pulling it apart, then you are changing the angle, then you are changing the angle again and finally you are, so this is not very good for the uh, regenerate apart from the fact that it is a big headache to sort of change the uh, hardware all around. So this can be done by a slightly different system which is based on the, uh, on, on the Elizer of itself. The only difference is instead of multiple connections over uh, different kinds of connections between the upper and the lower rings what you will see is six struts which are connecting it in a sort of um, V fashion. So a hexapod is what it, it, it says, hexa six pod legs. So the upper and lower parts are connected to each other by a combination of six legs. So that is the hexapod hardware. Because this is um, six things working together, uh, it is a very complex sort of mathematical uh, equation that, that works and that needs software to guide it. You cannot decide this um, on your own or with a calculator. <laughs> so the software does three things. It takes from you what is the sort of current frame geometry, what is the deformity, how have you fixed the uh, fixator. It takes from you what are the angulations or what are the corrections that you want to make and taking both those into account, it gives you a distraction plan. That is if you move, the, the struts are numbered from 1 to 6. So it says that if you move strut number 1 by so many millimeters, strut number 2 by so many millimeters, etc., etc., you will get a correction of your deformity <laughs> and it then gives you a schedule that on day 1, this is how it has to be moved, on day 2, this is how it has to be moved, etc. So hexapod mechanisms are not something new. It is relatively new in orthopedics, but in the industrial world, wherever precise positioning of an object in 3D space is required, a hexapod is used. When uh, pilots train on flight simulators, flight sim simulators are placed on a hexapod. When people are looking into space with telescopes, space telescopes are manipulated by uh, hexapods. So hexapod is not something which is new, only its application to orthopedics is relatively new. <laughs> so what are these three dimensional movements that we do? Now I said there are only two movements, one is that of translation and the second is of rotation. So when you look at lengthening and shortening, that is nothing but a translation in along the Z axis, up and down, uh, around, uh, along the Y axis according to what I showed you. So that is in the axial direction. You can then have translation to the right or translation to the left. This is along the X axis. You can have translation to the front and you can have translation to the back. This is along the Z axis. So the movement is translation. Only thing is it is along different axis. Similarly, when you look at angulation, if, if I say that the Z axis is the axis which is coming straight out at you and this has to be corrected to this, what is this? This is nothing but a rotation around the Z axis. So there are three rotations and three translations. You have transverse uh, movements either in the sagittal plane or in the frontal plane and you have angul angular corrections are done by rotation in the frontal plane or in the sagittal plane and finally the movement of uh, torsion which is in the axial uh, axis. So I will I'll show you a patient to sort of illustrate <laughs> the use of a hexapod in this kind of a patient. This was a girl who had uh, blounds which had been treated by a corrective osteotomy at uh, 6 and she had predominantly a proximal tibial varus, um, a certain amount of internal torsion and a mild hyperextension at the, now this thing, the rotation is something which can only be made out either clinically 
or on a CT scan. You can't make that out on plain X-rays. So she, here she had about 20 degrees of uh, internal rotation. That was her AP X-ray, normal right side and abnormal left side. And on the lateral, you can see a mild amount of hyperextension, which was not really uh, significant. And she was also shot by about, uh, I think it was three centimeters. So we do a whole series of uh, X-rays and get confirm the rotational profile on the um, CT scan, which shows us a medial uh, mechanical axis translation. Um, the angle between the two green lines gives us the magnitude of the virus. But <clears throat> we do the osteotomy at a lower level, though the cora, if you notice, is up here. And that's Cora is uh, at or slightly above the level of the joint, but technically you can only do the osteotomy down there because you want to have secure fixation in the proximal uh, level. We also do a fibular osteotomy. The other thing we usually try to do when we are doing this is at each segment you try to get the ring perpendicular to that particular segment. So if you look at the proximal ring, it is more or less parallel to the joint. If you look at these two rings, they are more or less perpendicular to the shaft. And once these two rings come together, <laughs> then you will have a correction. So that's the amount of um, virus there. And those of you who are familiar with deformity correction rules, normally we say that the cora should be, or the osteotomy should be at the level of the cora. And when the osteotomy is not at the level of the cora, you will have a certain amount of translation. So if you do this with that, in mind, you will get a correction of the axis, but it seems as if the there is a amount of translation uh, which is sort of unacceptable. This is translation at the fracture, but or the osteotomy, but the axis is perfectly uh, normalized. Look what happens if you do just an angulation, or opening wedge, or a closing wedge. You there is no translation at the um, osteotomy site, but you see this axis and you see this axis, they are displaced away from each other. So you are not restoring the axis. It looks possibly for those of you who are not accustomed to this, this rule, uh, more sort of you know anatomically correct, but actually biomechanically it is wrong. And if you just build in that amount of um, translation to it, you will see that now the axis is perfectly corrected. Now how important is this translation? This looks, when you look at the, it like this, it looks very, very abnormal. But just cover up that translation, that area of the bone. Now this bone looks normal. So that anatomic sort of incongruity is just a sort of passing phase. Once the child remodels, that comes back to um, straight. So this is how we we do the osteotomy again through a small incision, but the fixator is an elizer of fixator, but instead of standard elizer of components, we fix it with this kind of a um, strut connectors looked at from the AP and the lateral, put into the program how much deformity we want to correct. That was 27 degrees of uh, virus and 30 degrees of external rotation. Okay. <coughs> That gives us the progr program tells us and gives us a schedule like this on each day so much has to be corrected. It's not very difficult for uh, patients to do. This is one week post distraction. This is two weeks post distraction. Remember here now angulation as well as rotation is getting corrected gradually which is not possible with conventional <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh, we do a full length x-ray but she had flexion at the knee therefore this x-ray was not the right thing. Not, not the right uh, number, but when we did a spot film, uh, there was excessive valgus. We had sort of over calculated. Go back, reanalyze, and with the same hardware, only thing just get a new software. We found that we had correct, over corrected by about 7 degrees. So, with the same hardware, just inputting this new uh, number into the software, we are able to get that corrected over a period of seven days so that she is 
um, straight. So, this is with full correction and a full length x-ray before and after. This is after those distractors were removed, bone maturing, 7 weeks after distractor removal. All that translation now you can hardly sort of make out that it looks um, abnormal. And even now as you see, you will notice nature is throwing in new bone on this side. So, this, this amount of translation is already sort of hidden. This bump will go away with time. That is what um, she looks like uh, at the end of correction. And this is what is actually happening now um, in the labs where they are you know they are doing this, where you can calculate what is the amount of deformity that is uh, there, plan that and say ok it has to be corrected in uh, so many days and motorized distractors will move exactly the amount that is required uh, per day and get the deformity corrected. Uh, back to normal. So, then you and I can go and play golf. Thank you. <laughs>